What is up everybody? Chris here from Chris Gates Fitness back with another video and not only is this a video today but this is also the launch of a podcast channel channel for Chris Gates Fitness. I'm super excited to do this because my goal with everything is to get the right information in front of as many people as possible for health, fitness, nutrition, training, all that stuff. And one medium that I've been really interested in getting into is podcasting. I've done podcasting in the past, but I haven't done it for specifically health, fitness, nutrition, specifically for this business that I run. And um, I'm excited about it because I want to be on as many platforms as possible because I want to get the right information in front of as many people as possible. And I understand that we all consume content and learn things in different ways. I know that for myself personally, podcasts are huge for my own personal development. I listen to podcasts every single day when I'm driving to and from work. And since I'm from Pittsburgh and I have to drive through a tunnel to get to the place that I work, it takes me about an hour to get there and then get home. So I really actually have found that I enjoy that time because I get to put on podcasts that are about personal development, about health, fitness, nutrition. I get to learn new things and it supplements what I do here with my clients and the information I'm able to provide all of you. But I also want to be able to add that element to your daily routine if it's something that interests you. So everything that I put out there plus podcasting is now available. And if you're watching this as a video, I will put in the post a link to the podcast channel so that you can subscribe and get every episode, get all of this information uh, every week on any device that you listen to podcasts. So I'm super excited about it. I hope you are too, and I hope you'll follow along. We have really good topics to talk about this week. So we're launching this with the second Q&A. Uh, the Q&A series was actually just launched recently on the website and uh, this is the second edition of the Q&A. So the topics for this Q&A are how to burn belly fat, the military fitness plan, and how to control cheat days. So those are our three topics, our three questions of the week, and let's dive into them right now. All right, so the first question uh, that I got was, what exercises should I do specifically to burn belly fat? I can't seem to get rid of the excess fat around my waist. And this is super common for pretty much everybody. I mean, where we need to start is that everybody stores body fat in a different way, which is why if you see anybody that's overweight from one person to another, they're going to look different. We don't all store things exactly the same. The way that our body works is that when we eat more calories than we need, our body is conditioned to store those extra calories and they're often stored as body fat so that your body can utilize those stores of body fat if and when it needs them. Um, so genetically, we're kind of predisposed to how we're going to store that body fat on a person by person basis. It's very case specific to each person. So, a common place for us to all store body fat is our waistline, right? That area right around the belly button, below the belly button, that, that is a, a very typical place for us to store body fat. A lot of people will have a typical place is the hips, above the hips, below the hips. Some of us have uh, store fat, fat in our butts, which sucks, uh, inner thighs. You know, there's a lot of different areas that are popular, but they all tend to be around that waistline. So. In some way, shape, or form, I think a lot of people can relate to this question and benefit from the answer to it. So we've established that, that everybody stores fat in a different way. Now, the concept that this person asked about is the concept of spot burning fat. And there is kind of a mixture of opinions as to whether or not spot burning is something that you can actually do. Spot burning would be, okay, I have excess belly fat. I'm, I want to burn that belly fat, so I'm going to do core exercises, a lot of crunches. I'm gonna do abdominal exercises because that's the area that has too much body fat and I wanna get rid of it. The same could be said is if you had 
uh, you know, body fat on your arms and you decided to do a lot of bicep curls and tricep pushdowns to try and work out those specific body parts to get rid of that body fat. Generally speaking, this is a concept that's not actually possible. There's no evidence really, uh, there's no conclusive evidence that suggests that we can exercise a specific area of our body and burn fat in that specific area of our body. More so, what we see is when we take on excess body fat, we store it in those places like we talked about before, and to burn that excess body fat, you'll see that those places where the fat goes to first for you to store it, often are the places that take the longest for you to get rid of it. So with all of that said, the best approach to burning excess belly fat is not to try and do a million crunches a week because you're targeting your stomach. The best approach is to step back and understand that regardless of how many crunches you do, all that is to your body is energy expenditure. So we need to find ways to increase our energy expenditure as much as possible. If we can do that and have a calorie deficit, over time, we're gonna find that we burn body fat, and in those areas, such as the stomach, it may take longer for us to burn that excess belly fat, but it can and will happen over time if you can be consistent. So find ways to increase your energy expenditure. That could be going for regular walks every day. Walking is one of the best exercises you can do just for general energy expenditure. Going for runs, doing cardio, things that get your entire body in motion are going to be what probably burn the most ca the most calories, burn the most fat, however you want to put it. They're going to cause you to uh, put forth more effort and energy into that exercise and you're going to see the energy expenditure go up over time. And then of course the calorie deficit is also important because you can be doing as many exercises as you want, but if you're eating more calories then you're burning and your exercises, if you're taking in more energy than you're putting out on a daily basis, it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to continue to uh, build body fat, you're going to continue to store body fat over time, and you're going to continue to have issues and struggles. So those are the two things I want you to focus on. The question again is what exercises should I do to burn belly fat? Well, what you should do is do exercises that get your whole body in motion, so you can maximize the amount of energy expenditure you have. And number two, it's not exercise related at all. You need to be in a calorie deficit. Okay, question number two. This is a pretty unique one, uh, but one that I want to discuss because, well, let's just get into it. It's, should I do the military fitness training plan? Summer is right around the corner and I wanna get started now. It looks pretty cool. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because we're getting into that time of year where spring's right around the corner, beach trips are right around the corner or they are approaching and people want to get in good shape as quickly as possible. And you'll see a lot of these kind of catchy names, fad plans pop up on the internet. And they're very, I think, intriguing for people because of their simplicity. You'll see, so for instance, this plan. Let's go through the, the nuts and bolts of the military fitness plan. Who knows if this is actually something they do in the military. I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna guess they probably don't, but the military fitness plan is on every day of the week, you're doing all of these exercises. You're gonna be doing squats, planks, crunches, jumping jacks, lunges, wall sits, sit-ups, butt kicks, and push-ups. Okay, so those nine exercises you're going to do every day. In some, the rep ranges for each one, they vary by day, but it's anywhere between five and 60 reps a day. For a lot of these movements, these exercises, you're doing over 100 reps a week. Now, generally, I would say do not do a fitness plan like this because most people that are asking if they should do this type of program, they're asking because they're relatively sedentary and they're looking for some guidance, they're looking for some structure, they're looking for something to do. 
And I, I want to champion that. I want you to do something. I want you to get out there, be active, uh, get that energy expenditure up and start getting fit and healthy. But this is not a place where I would encourage people to start because you're going from zero to 100 way too quick. Chances are, if you do this military fitness plan or any plan that's like it, you're going to do a couple days of it. You're going to be so sore from it that you're not going to be able to continue it. You're going to have to stop for a few days and chances are it was so painful, you're not going to come back to it again. My recommendation would be to start small and build over time. That is a hallmark of the messaging that I deliver here uh, on this website and now on the podcast and our videos, all the content we put out there. You can't, you can't get to where you want to be overnight. Anybody that if you look up to anybody because of their physique or their lifestyle habits, the way that they live their a healthy lifestyle, those people didn't get there overnight. And you're not going to get there overnight either if you want to establish something healthy that gets you to have, you know, to lose weight or have a certain body type or look a certain way. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of habits that form and compile on each other to get you to where you want to go. I don't think these types of plans, especially this one, are the, the, the right medicine. I don't think that's the prescription for you. I think you should start slow and build over time. Start with walking if you're not doing anything. Start with walking. See if you can increase your mileage over time. Start with a step count and see if you can increase your step count over time. Uh, go to the gym. And if you want to lift weights, start with machines. Start with four machines and get really good at those and do three sets of each and try to increase that over time as you get acclimated to the movements. Uh, really starting small, building slowly over time is going to be the safest and most effective way for you to get fit and healthy, to do the things that you want to do. It's not really, these, these, these fad plans that you're going to see pop up are not the answer uh, because they're just not easy to adhere to, especially for somebody that's sedentary or a beginner. So I would say don't. And I would say if you're looking for something to do uh, and, and you're looking to get in better shape because beach season is coming up or vacations or whatever, contact me and let's talk about what might be best for you. That con you Contact me and we can talk about something you could do. It doesn't even have to be working with me, but let's find you the right avenue to pursue. So that was question number two. And on to our final question. Question number three is, what do I need to do to keep a cheat day from spinning out of control and becoming a cheat week? This is something that's extremely, extremely common. I run into this with clients quite, uh, not quite often, but often enough. I mean, it's something that anybody's going to run into uh, at least once or twice when you're trying to diet. And it's a great question. And where I want to start with this is just the way we're framing what a cheat day is. And I really want all of us to get away from the word cheat. The word cheat in cheat day kind of insinuates that you're cheating on the program that is creating progress for you. You're going against everything that has worked for you to this point. You're going against what your coach or what your program suggests that you do. You're doing the opposite of it. That's what a cheat implies. How I like to frame this for clients is we take a diet break. A diet break is something that allows you to eat a little bit more, maybe indulge in a food or two that you've abstained from to this point, but it's still structured. I don't think if you're on a training program or a nutrition program or both, I don't think that you should ever have a cheat I think that you should always be structured in some way um, until you get to where you want to go. You don't have to be extremely structured every day of your life for the rest of your life. That's not realistic. But if you're on a program, if you're making progress or if you want to make progress, a cheat day or cheating is not going to work. Let's call it a diet break. Let's add three to 400 more calories into your diet for that day or a series of days. Let you get a little mental break, a little, a little relaxation, 
like I said, enjoy some of those foods that you haven't had for a while. And then let's get back to it. So that, yeah, we added three to 400 more calories into your diet for a day or two or three days. The scale is not going to go up much, if any, at all, because if you're dieting and you're in a calorie deficit, the diet break is really probably just going to bring you back to a maintenance amount of calories where you're maintaining the weight that you have. And then we dive back into a calorie deficit so that you can continue losing weight. It should be structured because that cheat day can easily become a cheat week if you don't have a structure assigned to it um, because oh, the cheat day was great. Oh, let's do it tomorrow. And if there's no end in sight, there's really no end in sight. And the chances of you falling off your program completely are probably pretty high or at least significantly likely. So let's add some structure to it. Let's give you that break, but let's call it a diet break. Let's not call it a cheat and let's keep things controlled. Let you enjoy what you want to enjoy and then get back to the program. So that's my answer is to not even think of it as a cheat day. Let's call it a diet break. Let's add some structure and then let's keep making progress. So that's going to do it for this week's Q&A. Uh, thanks so much for listening and uh, watching. And like I said, this is going to be a regularity in the podcast moving forward. I'm not really sure where the podcast is going to go, but I'm super excited to find out. With all these different content pieces, um, I just try to add them as it makes sense and as it becomes feasible. And I think now's the right time to do it. And uh, we're churning out a lot of good stuff here. I hope it's helping you guys. That's my one and only goal is to help everybody be happy, healthy, and strong. And I think we're off to a good start. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love for you guys to subscribe to the podcast and continue following along wherever is most convenient for you. And I'll keep trying to do everything I can to help you be happy, healthy, and strong. So, all right. I uh, appreciate it. And I will talk to you all again soon. See ya.